And welcome back to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks. And this is the time I'm going to kind of tell you some upcoming things that are going to happen. Um, now, first of all, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This is Arts and Humanities Month. And this is a cookie, which I was trying to eat during the commercial break. And I don't think I got it all eaten, but that's okay. It's right here, and I will eat it as soon as the show is over. How is that? So you saw Adrian was on uh, with us, and he and Stormy will be at the Inman Coffee House at 7 o'clock Saturday, and it's free admission. So if you don't have anything to do, you might want to go down there and just sit and listen to a little bit of, of music um, because it, it'll, be, it'll be really nice. And it's just low-key music. It's not going to be loud. It's not going to be rock and roll or anything. It's just low-key. It's basically what I loved in the 60s and 70s was the folk music. Peter, Paul, and Mary were my very most favorite. Um, and then there was the Righteous Brothers and then some others who did kind of soulful stuff, and I really enjoyed that. So that is this, this Saturday downtown, and we also have several other things happening this weekend. You have the Pumpkin Town Festival in downtown Athens. And, folks, when I say downtown Athens, it is downtown Athens. It is right around the courthouse. The parking is free, and... And there is no admission cost. Now, there will be things. There will be crafters there. There will be um, all kinds of uh, vendors there. And so you, if you want to buy something, that's not free. You're going to have to buy because the vendors and, and the crafters bought booths there, and they, they want to be sure that they at least make their booth fee. So that's Saturday. Now, it'll start at 7 o'clock with a pancake breakfast for Habitat. And then the main events open and from 10 until 5. And I had Mary Pico on, and she told us about it. So you can go on Facebook and go back to that, um, that telecast and see exactly what all she said because there's all kinds of things going on there. Excuse me. That's that cookie I just ate. And then we have the Coker Creek Autumn Gold Festival. And it has been going, folks, for years because I know when Flavis and I first started Case and Art, it started as Case and Crafts, and he was framing different cross stitches of mine, and then I was making those adopter dolls, and we would go to all kinds of craft shows around uh, any area, and we always went to the, uh, the Autumn Gold Festival because it was really great. It's a two-day event, so it'll be Saturday and Sunday. It starts at 9 and goes until 6. I'm sorry, it starts at 10 and goes until 6 every day. There is an, a fee to get into that one. It's either $3 or $4. So it's Saturday and Sunday. And I think I've told you this before that they used to pan for gold. And I don't know whether they still do that up there or not at this festival, but huge crowds of people come through. And it should be a beautiful time of the year to be up there. So you can go to MonroeCountyTourism.com and get information about that. But it's a wonderful festival. And, of course, the Athens Festival, Pumpkin Town Festival, Athens 10, uh, you can go there to check that out. So those are two things that are going on this weekend, as well as Adrian and Stormy being at the Inman Street Coffee. Now, October the 19th and the 21st, you're going to have the Apple Festival downtown. Downtown Cleveland around the courthouse, and they have all kinds of activities for that, folks. And there is a $5 admission, that's a one-day ticket, and... Uh, $4 for children and seniors, and children under three are and three and under are free. But it's a great event, and um, it's Apple, ClevelandAppleFestival.org, and, and it's a great time. Um, they have food vendors. They have crafters. They, um, in the past, they've had hay rides. They've had all kinds of things for kids to do, and so it's very entertaining. I think they have the bouncy houses, too, so... So that is next weekend, the 19th and the 20th. And that should be very, very good. And then, of course, we have the block party on the 31st at ha on Halloween evening from 5 till 10 downtown around our courthouse square. And you can check that out at www.mainstreetcleveland.com. Now, there's other things happening that night. If you don't want to come and fight the crowd, that's fine. Nobody's going to fuss at you if you don't want to do that. Because Toyota of Cleveland, and Joey's going to be on my next show, I think, to, to talk about that. They're gonna, he's going to tell you what they're offering out there as far as entertainment on the south end of town down there. So if you don't want to come all the way into town, you can come up Highway 11 from 
McDonald and whatever, Black Fox area, and stop at Toyota for their Halloween party. Or you can go out to the Bradley Square Mall for their Halloween party. And then, I, as I have passed churches, there's signs up that people are having trunk and treats. Somebody's having theirs the 24th, and I wish... See, I get my phone out, and I look at Facebook, and it says all these things, and what I need to do is get a piece of paper and write it down, write down each one of them so that I have those days and times for you all because those, those would be very interesting. So there's a lot of churches doing trunk and treat. Mount Olive is doing it. Uh, Candy's Creek is doing it. And I know that several, several churches are going to do it. Then Broad Street will have their sanctuary open for people to come through and listen to the organ playing. And we will have free books for children and also water and a restroom facility. So that's Halloween night. Now, the Okoe Theater Group is going to do <laughs> Wait Until Dark. And I have a feeling that that is a, a scary, it says a thriller. And so there you go. And it's October the 19th through the 27th. They'll be doing 19, 25, 26 at 7.30 and 20 and 27 at 2.30. And you can, tickets are now available on Facebook or you can go to o uh, our Okoe Theater at the venue Creekside or you can buy tickets at the door. And the tickets are $15 for adults, $12 for uh, seniors and young adults. Now, here's the thing, folks. It's for mature audiences. So please, if you have a six-year-old and you want to bring them to a scary movie or a scary production, don't do it because the other people are there to enjoy this. And if your child gets scared and starts hollering and screaming, everybody's, nobody's having a good time, okay? So, so remember that it's mature audiences only. And don't tell me your six-year-old is mature because I'm probably not going to believe that because I taught seven-year-olds, and they weren't, but I loved them. So also then on the October 29th, and I will be out of the country on October 29th, and I hate that because that is going to be spirits, legends, and lore. And I have forgotten how what, what, what year this is for this, but Dwight Richardson is going to be on with us. And the storytellers, Chef Joe Guy, and I've told you he's Joey to me because I taught him in second grade when he was seven years old. Wonderful kid, wonderful kid, now a very nice young man. So he's going to be a storyteller. Pete Vanderpool will be back. I think this is Joe's first year to do this. Pete Vander, Vanderpool will be back. Rob Alderman, I think this is his second year. Connie Gatlin is back. She's been doing it, I think, ever since it started. Dan Buck from Lee University. Judy Baker, both of them are old, old standards in this. Deborah Naren Holland is another old standard in this. Brandy King is new for this year. And then Tim Poteet. And I keep telling you, I think he's going to sing Bringing Mary Home, which is a really spooky song. But it's... Um, Whatever he sings will be absolutely wonderful. So this is not one that we recommend that you not bring kids, but the lights are going to be turned down. We'll be spotlighting. I, we, they will be spotlighting because I won't be here. I'm going to miss it this year, and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I have bought a sponsorship. I've already given away my two tickets, but it should be great. So tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for students. You can buy them at the Cleveland Bradley Chamber of Commerce or Bank of Cleveland downtown, or you can call... Uh, 423-715-0030-0080-00, I cannot read this, 0030, I do believe, to find out. And then they also have a Facebook page, Spirits, Legends, and Lore. So you want to be sure and, and go to see that because, folks, it's wonderful. It really is wonderful. And now I had Kathleen, Kath, Catherine Patton on with me in the last show. Friday, October the 18th from 6 to 9 will be the Love Nancy Wine for the Mind. This is their fifth annual. This is a fundraiser for all the things that Nancy does for the Alzheimer's patients and their families. It's going to be at the Coffee Barn at 2688 Benton Pike. Uh, oh, that's on your screen. Okay. And so there's your address. Music by Randy Steele and Friends. Cafe Roma is doing the heavy hors d'oeuvres. Um, and wine and beer by Mash and Hops and the coffees. Um, and then there's live and silent auction items, 50-50 raffle. Tickets are $45 for an individual or $80 for two people. And that's a couple. 
but it doesn't have to necessarily be a couple. If I wanted to jerk Anne Marie up and us go, then we could get in for $80 instead of $45 each. So that's kind of how you do this, this thing. But it's a fundraiser. I have never been able to go. I understand it's a wonderful event. And your uh, auctioneer is Mr. Lou Patton, who I understand does a great job. Now, let me talk a minute about the Museum Center at Five Points because they're going to have a Halloween night on Thursday, October the 24th. Um, and it is going to be Cleveland Storytellers and The Sound of Tennessee, and they're wonderful. They are so wonderful. I've had them on the show. I had them on for Valentine's, and they sang. But it's a night of music and spooky tales. And wear your best cost costume, excuse me, and come kick off the holiday season. So I'm going to assume that's 6 o'clock because that's normally the time they do these. And it's the History Happy Hour. Now, if you're a member of the museum, you get in free. If you're not a member of the museum, most of these are $15. And um, uh, it's, it's really good. Yeah, members free, non-members $15. Tickets are available for, for purchase on our website at museumcenter.org, history hyphen happy hyphen hour. So, um, and it says that this is sponsored by Impressions Catering and Events and Donna Miller. So I'm sure that the food will be good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little heads up into 2020 at the museum, and hopefully I can get somebody on to talk about this. I will not be here on the 24th, and I hate that because I usually try to go to the hippie history happy hours. I will be in Dublin, Ireland. I had to think a minute what part. I will be in Ireland, and I will be in Dublin that day. Uh, but now we go into January 16th, 2020, Prohibition. Step back in time to the Roaring Twenties as the museum is transformed into a speakeasy. Now that's my era, folks. I love the Roaring Twenties. I love the fashions. I love the music. I love everything about the Twenties. Uh, it's a night for live jazz music by Melanie Willett's Jazz Quartet and stories of moonshining in Tennessee told by Chuck Butler of Dalton Distillery. And then in, on March 26th, uh, they're going to talk about the 2011 tornadoes. Uh, Bill Race will be there and country music rising star Cole Sitzler will be there. And then on May 28th, women's suffrage. That's another one I feel strongly about, folks. And the DAR is sponsoring that one. And Linda Moss Mimes and the Scenic City Chorus will be there for that. So I will try to get somebody on from the museum to talk about those because that is going to be good. And that reminds me that I need to get my membership check in to the museum because these History Happy Hours are free to museum members. $15 if you're not a museum member and they usually have heavy hors d'oeuvres, adult beverages or water and Cokes and things like that. So I think that is, the, I think that's just a wonderful opportunity folks. Now the winter banners are going up. Right now the banners are out that say uh, the block party, our banners downtown. And that's Main Street Cleveland does those, and that is great. And they hang for two or three months. And so if you're interested in a banner, you need to get in touch with Sharon Marr at MainStreetCleveland.org and find out about those banners because last year they sold out, and the cost is $150. And the new banners will go from November through February, and that is actually $31.50 a month, which is pretty good advertising because it's hanging right up there on one of the poles downtown. So if you're interested in doing that, um, that would be great. Now, if you're interested in coming to the Main Street regular meeting, that'll be Monday, October 21st at the Elks Lodge. The, the meal is $11, and Dr. Bill Seymour from Cleveland State Community College is our program for that day. So you don't have to be a member of Main Street to come, but, you, but if you come, we hope you're coming with the anticipation of your business, your organization joining Main Street. And then... October the 26th will be the very last cruise-in for this season, and the Main Street Cruisers will be collecting toys for Toys for Tots, which is the U.S. Marine Corps does this every Christmas. They want new unwrapped toys brought in, and uh, they collect them right there where you sign in at the cruise-in, and, and the Marines will take them with them. Um, and the block party, like I say, is actually the 31st, and there will be other, um, there will be other trick or treating going on. I know Centenary Avenue is very busy always, and other places will be too. 
and I will try my best to lay down a piece of paper next to my iPhone, and every time I see a trunk or treat, I'll write it down so I can tell you about that. But it's been a busy day in Nancy's neighborhood. I thank the gals from the Banner for being here to tell us about the taste of the holidays, and Adrian for sharing with us what he does here to make my show and other people's shows actually go to the tower and so that you all can see them. So that tower to me is like an iCloud. I have no idea. I know nothing about it, but that's okay. It's important, and I think iCloud is important too. So today from Nancy's Neighborhood, folks, it's been a lovely fall day, and I hope to be back with you next time. Bye-bye.